In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and replace your steering knuckle. I don't actually have a new one, so I'm going to be reinstalling the original. However, this will show you the procedure. Let's get started. To start, let's remove the wheel. If you have these wheels, they'll have the little center cap in the middle that you can pop off either with a trim tool or a screwdriver. Just be careful not to damage the surface of the wheel. And with that off, you can take your 21 millimeter socket and remove all five of your lug nuts. Remove your wheel. I'm going to remove this 10 millimeter bolt that holds the brake line and the ABS sensor in place. At this point, actually, might as well remove the 10 millimeter bolt for the ABS sensor itself. Grab this with some pliers. You should be able to pull it straight out of the knuckle. Hopefully yours isn't too rusted. We'll wait to do that until the caliper's off so we can have more room. Use an 18 millimeter socket and remove the two bolts that hold the caliper bracket onto the knuckle. Leave the top one in a few threads so it can hold it while you remove the bottom one. Remove the bolts, pull the caliper off, watch out so the rotor doesn't fall on your foot. Hang the caliper aside. Just make sure that when you hang it, it doesn't put pressure on the brake hose. Remove your rotor, set it aside safely. Now we have more room to work with this ABS sensor, which still has to come out. Grab it with pliers, try to break it free. It is fairly new, so it should come out. I'm gonna take a screwdriver and uh, try to stick it in right between the knuckle and the sensor to help pry it away. Try not to break it when you do this though. There we go. There it is. At this point we have to get the hub and bearing off, so I'm going to take a screwdriver and get the cap off of here. This is just a little dust cap. Use your 36 millimeter socket and remove the spindle nut. At this point, the hub and bearing should come off. Just hold it together so that the inner race doesn't separate on the back side as well as on the front side. At this point, I wanna get the backing shield off of here because it'll be easier while this is mounted. So take your 10 millimeter socket, remove all three bolts that hold this on. <coughs> These might break for you. They might actually even be different sizes. It looks like someone has added some washers here, but whatever you have to do, get it off. <coughs> Okay, so that one broke, but I still have the two other ones, so that's fine. Let's get the outer tie rod off, remove the cotter pin. Hopefully for you, it isn't too rusty, and you can remove it. If it is, just take the nut off over the cotter pin and then drill it out. Regardless, never reuse your cotter pins, get a new one. Use your 21 millimeter socket, remove the castle nut. I'm gonna put it on a couple threads and then use a hammer, tap the knuckle, that'll break it free. There we go. Just make sure you don't hit your boot when you do this. Take the nut off, pull the tie rod away. I'm gonna put the nut back on just so I can keep it safe and move the tie rod out of your way. At this point, I wanna take off this nut for this lower control arm with the uh, ball joint that goes through the knuckle. And the best way to get to it, unless you wanna wrench it off, is to pull the knuckle outwards like this. And because it doesn't wanna stay, I'm just going to, I turn the wheel on the other side and I'm just going to put the tie rod back through the knuckle. Okay, put the knot on a couple threads for safety so it doesn't pop out. And then we'll go ahead and take that ball joint control arm off and separate it. There's a 21 millimeter socket. It's easiest to get to it if you have a swivel adapter. Make sure your socket's seated on there fully. Now this ball joint goes from the knuckle into the control arm, so we have to tap the control arm to get the ball joint to break free. I'm gonna carefully tap it through this opening in the knuckle. I'm gonna take a pry bar and carefully pry up to separate this. Perfect. All right, at this point, 
because this is separated, I'm just going to leave it in here because there's no way I can take it out until we unbolt this other arm. Another 21 millimeter nut. This knuckle is still being held on by the upper ball joint, so it's not going to fall. Also, this is still on, but just try to separate this for now. There we go. Let's turn the steering wheel back to the center position so we can remove this tie rod easily. Get this back out of here. Okay, at this point, we have separated both of the lower ball joints, but the only thing that's left is the upper ball joint. So let's get an 18 millimeter socket and take this nut off. Put it on a few threads so that when you hammer the knuckle, it doesn't want to fall down. Hammer the knuckle right here. Make sure you don't hit your boot. I know my boot is in very poor condition, but regardless, don't damage it if yours is good. There we go. Going to support the knuckle. Take this nut off. And there we go. There's your knuckle. Now, if you had your new knuckle, you would simply put it back on to the, uh, all the ball joints. Make sure they all line up. To put this mounting nut on so it can stay in place. There we go. Now I don't have to hold it anymore. I can line this one up. Put this nut on. And at the top, put the upper control arm back through the knuckle. Now I know pretty much all of my ball joints are bad, or at least the boots are, so typically you would never want to put this back together like this, but this is only for demonstrational purposes on video. If your ball joints look like this, please replace them before you put it back together. I'm gonna start with this upper ball joint, tighten it up. I'm gonna tighten all of them, and then we'll uh, come back and torque them all. To help you, you can take a pry bar, put it on the control arm through the spring, press down, and this will get your ball joint stud all the way through. Tighten this one up. Might as well put the tie rod in since we're here. Last one will be this arm right here. Last one. These two ball joints get torqued to 90 foot pounds. Then let's do the tie rod to 63 foot-pounds. That's torqued right there. We have to line up the cotter pin slots with the hole on the stud. It does not line up for me, and to do this, you always want to keep tightening and not loosen to get it to line up. And now that it lines up, always use a new cotter pin. Never reuse your old one, like I said. and the upper ball joint gets torqued to only 35 foot-pounds. Now don't forget to put back your backing shield, and it goes on with this slip, the curvature facing out. My top bolt is broken, but I still have my two bottom bolts, so I'm going to fasten it with these. If you wanted to, you could drill out this top one, put another one in, but it's going to be plenty safe with just these two. Hold it nice and centered, snug these up. Clean up the spindle so that the wheel bearing has a nice mounting surface for it to sit on. Then take your wheel hub and bearing, inspect it. This would be a great time to replace it if needed. Mine is still in good condition, so I'm going to reuse it. Slide it on, hold your outer race in place as you slide it because you don't want it to accidentally pop out. Take your mounting nut and thread it on. I'm going to bottom it out with my air gun and then I will torque it with my torque wrench to 157 foot-pounds. It's important that you torque it properly so that the bearing doesn't get prematurely worn. bottomed out right there. Let's grab the torque wrench and this is nice because the hub spins on the bearing but the spindle is stationary so you don't have to hold it like you would on normal vehicles. So 157 foot-pounds right there. It's important that you torque it properly so that the bearing doesn't wear prematurely from extra or not enough pressure. 
Now around the edge here, I, I like to put some grease or you could put some RTV in, whatever you prefer. This will help that cap seal up so that it makes a watertight seal. Otherwise water can get in there and uh, destroy your bearing prematurely. Get the cap, slide it over, use a rubber mallet. You don't want to destroy this by bending it with a steel hammer. Tap it all around, make sure it's seated. And if you have any excess that came off on the side, whether it's RTV or grease, wipe it off. Now we want to focus on this surface of the hub here. So as you can see, someone has already coated it with anises, but I can see that it has raised areas underneath the anises, so I want to clean that up. As you can see, this is a, a two-stage hub, basically has two raised areas on the inside and on the outside, the center is pushed in a little bit is recessed. So we don't have to worry so much about the center, mainly this area and then the larger ring that goes around it. That's where the rotor will sit. You'd want to clean the back side of your rotor as well so that it has a nice mounting surface. If it's not clean and it's not flat, you will have the rotor sit crooked and then you can have braking issues. I have a little collection bucket underneath to catch my brake parts cleaner and I'm going to use it to spray off the old anises. This exposes just how much rust buildup is here. So let's go ahead and clean it. I'm gonna use a light sanding disc and sand this area down. You can use a wire brush if yours isn't as bad, but this one's pretty bad, so I have to sand it down nice and flat. Okay, give it one last rinse and then we'll coat it with some anises. Make sure you clean off the threads on the lug studs. And now take your anises of choice and put it on here. Make sure you focus on this outer ring as well as the inner lip right here where the rotor sits. On the center part, you can put it on, but it doesn't have to be as good of a coverage as it should be on the outside here. You also don't wanna to put too much because if you put too much, it'll squish out when you put the rotor on and then it's gonna start flinging everywhere as you drive down the road. It can get on your brakes and that would not be good because technically this is a somewhat of a lubricant. So you don't want this on your brakes, but apply it nice and thin layer, should go a long way. It's time to put the rotor on. As you can see, mine is new. So on the inside right here, there's nothing to clean, but if yours is rusted, go ahead and sand this down just like you did the hub. You don't need to coat it because the hub has the coating and slide it over. I'm gonna put a lug nut on so I can hold it on nice and safe. There we go. If needed, clean the outside surface too where the wheel mounts, it's important. Otherwise the wheel won't sit flush and it's not gonna cause braking issues, but it can cause shakes and vibrations as you drive down the road. If needed, clean off the surface of the rotors. If you put any grease marks on it, fingerprints, anything like that, you want this to be a nice dry surface for the pads to grip. It's time to remount the ABS sensor slide it through. I put a little bit of grease on it so it can prevent it from seizing up in the future. If you can't push it through all the way, here's a little trick. Put pliers around it and then tap the pliers. That way you don't directly tap on the ABS sensor. Perfect. The bolt hole should line up, so let's put it in. I'm gonna do this by hand so I don't break the bolt off. Nice and snug. Last but not least, put the caliper on, slide it over the rotor, have your bolts ready. And once everything lines up, put in the two mounting bolts for the bracket onto the knuckle. On these, don't put anything like anti-seize or grease. If anything, you'd wanna put thread locker so that they stay on here nice and tight. You would not want these coming off by themselves. Okay, let's bottom these out, and then we'll torque them to 70 foot-pounds. 70 foot-pounds. Now let's secure the brake hose and the ABS wire. The ABS wire popped out of its retainer, so I'm just gonna slide it right back in here. There we go. And let's line up the bolt hole. Get your little 10 millimeter bolt and bolt this up. There we go. Reinstall the wheel. Put on all five of your lug nuts, and then we'll torque them to 110 foot-pounds in a cross pattern.
110 foot-pounds. Okay, double check them if you want. If not, go ahead and put the cap back on if you have one of these. Line it up. And there you have it. Take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.